In this video, I cover all of factoring, and here are the examples that I cover. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get right into it. Let's start with these greatest common factor examples where I have to take one thing out. So I need something that goes into 3 and 9 at the same time. That's 3. And x cubed will also be taken out, and I'll get x minus 3 as an answer. Beautiful. Now, final example. I could take out AB, and I will get 2AB minus 5 plus 6a squared b as the answer. Let's say you have to factor quadratic trinomials. We start with a equals 1. Again, that's easier than a not equal 1. So how do I do this? I need two numbers that multiply to 42 but add to 13. What are the numbers? 6 and 7. Right? So those two equations are fully satisfied. That's how I know I got the right numbers. And I can factor it. Write two brackets down. Pretty easy to do. Put an x in each of those two brackets. When you multiply those, you'll get x squared back. That's beautiful. Now put the two numbers down. So I have plus 6 and plus 7, right? So plus 6 plus 7 as my two answers. That's it. A not equal 1 is similar. It just requires more of a process. So let's see. I need two numbers that multiply to 6 times 7. What's 6 times 7? 42. So I need two numbers that again multiply to 42, but add to 13. I already know the answers. That's 6 and 7. Both are positive. So how does this differ from the last approach of a equal 1? So what I do is I copy down the first term, copy down the last term. Nothing changes there. But the middle term gets split using decomposition into the two numbers that I found. So that 6 and 7 is coming from here, right? Great. Now let's highlight these two pairs of terms. This is called factor by grouping because I'm grouping the first two and the last two together. So what can I take out as a GCF from the first two terms? What can I take out from this? I could take out 6x and I'll get x plus 1 as my first pair factored, right? Now out of the last pair, I have 7. I could take out a 7 and I get x plus 1. And notice how I have a common factor here of x plus 1. Let's pull out that common factor of x plus 1 and let's read what's left. So what's left if I take it out? I get 6x plus 7. And so that is my fully factored form for a not equal 1. These two are difference of squares examples. How do I know that? Well, these are perfect squares and I've got a minus in the middle. That means a difference, right? Perfect. So now to get the answer, write two brackets down. Square root the first term and you get x, x. Square root the last term, you get 9, 9. And then put either minus plus or plus minus. Doesn't matter, you're all good to go. Now let's do the same example but with a not equal 1. So in this case, it's going to be 3x, 3x. And it's going to be 5y, 5y. And then put minus plus or again plus minus. Doesn't matter, you're good to go. Finally, we have these quartic examples. Quartic meaning x to the power of 4. How do I factor these? Not a problem. In this case, this is also a difference of squares because you have x to the 4, which is square rootable, and 16 square rootable. So here we go. I would get, if I write the two brackets, I get x squared, x squared. I get 4, 4, and then I put minus plus. Now, this guy cannot be broken down further. That's just x squared plus 4. Right? But this guy is a difference of squares on the left, so I can break that down into two smaller brackets. So these two brackets are going to be x, x, 2, 2, and minus plus. So that is fully factored form for a quartic.